Uh, what I've done now is I have mounted uh, a one inch EMT bar uh, from the ceiling and that is now sitting about 10 inches from the back wall and then we're also going to be adding some foam flooring and uh, some turf around what was my hitting mat so stay tuned all right so i went ahead and, and did a time lapse of me installing the screen and the weighted blanket here um, unfortunately I, I thought i had the camera recording um, also to catch me installing the eva foam and the turf on the ground but uh, when I went back to check that video, it, it was not uh, viable to put in, so uh, this is the only kind of installation, I guess, video that I have for this. And then I will include um, in the description below, like, all of the, the main parts and then the cost and links to those items. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Super excited, a uh, couple things in this video today. Uh, one, obviously, you can kind of see that I'm, I'm in my simulator room, back in my house, uh, so we'll be able to do some indoor videos, some demos and stuff moving forward uh, in here. Uh, the second thing is I've got my DJI wireless mic, so you can probably already hear much better audio quality than I had in some of my previous videos. So really excited about that and just having that better quality uh, for y'all going forward in, in the rest of the videos. All right, and probably as you as you saw at the beginning of this video, I had a, I found the best picture that I probably that I still had of how my original setup was in here with just the the net hanging back here, this hitting mat and uh, Garmin R10. Um, all of that I pretty much spent right at around thousand dollars, so that's kind of what got me started into this. And then it's just kind of grown from there, as you can see. All right, so like y'all probably saw in the time lapse video, um, I I hung a a black heavy weighted blanket, moving blanket um, first, and then I hung the impact screen next. The heavy moving weighted blanket really helps with ball bounce back and deadens the ball uh, shot in the middle of the screen, uh, so it doesn't come flying back at me. Uh, so that that's very helpful. And then this screen is a 7.7 .7 tall uh, feet tall by 13 feet wide, and it's a, the preferred Carl's Place uh, screen. All right, so now I mentioned the screen. That's one of the improvements in here since my original sim setup. Um, obviously, once I got the screen, I had to get something to project to it. So above me here is the Optoma uh, GT1080 HDR, um, very highly recommended golf sim uh, projector. Uh, one of the main reasons is its short throw capability. I've got this thing mounted, uh, I think it's about six and a half to seven feet um, from the screen. And it's projecting a, basically a full uh, HD 16 by 9 image uh, on the 13 foot wide screen from there. All right. And kind of the next big thing is the mat. It is the same. It's the original mat that I've had down here uh, pretty much all this time for almost the past probably year and a half to two years. It's a, a mat by Monster Mats, and it's five feet by five feet. Can't say enough about the mat, honestly. It, it does great with, with body fatigue. I don't have any issues with wrist soreness, with elbow soreness, anything in my shoulders. Um, I've had sessions down here before where I've hit probably two or 300 shots in a day, and I've, I've never had any issues. The only probably two complaints that I have with the mat uh, would be that one, as you hit with irons, it kind of leaves like a green plasticky film on the bottom of your clubs. It's really easy to clean off. The only thing is, is as you continue to hit shots and hit, hit shots, is that that plasticky film will kind of wear off and then it just kind of like floats around or just leaves little bitty pieces, little bitty shards of it, um, kind of all over your mat and furniture, carpet and all that stuff. So you just have to vacuum it up every once in a while. But the, the main issue as far as... Uh, simulation that I had with with the mat is that it gives you a great fairway feel and, and great divot feel for that but unfortunately it's a little bit tall uh, for putting so I was finding that in in simulation when I would put off of this thing what I would see roll out five or six feet in inside the room here and I would think it'd be a five or six foot putt on the simulator well depending on you know what the stem of the greens are set at if it's rolling pretty fast uh, in, in whatever you're playing, getting through this, you would hit it harder, and with an optical launch monitor, that would cause it to roll out 
sometimes nine, 10, 12 feet on just like a five or six foot putt. So I had to do something to kind of improve that. And that kind of leads me to really the last two things that I've kind of done in here. Uh, one is I've added some putting turf uh, around the main hitting mat, the monster mat here. And underneath that, that putting turf is um, uh, three quarter inch EVA, just, just foam mats, uh, just like gym flooring that you normally would see. So that helps put it at basically the same height as this, as this monster mat. But um, what my goal with that was is to be able to actually come up in front of the hitting mat and putt from here so that I get more of a true roll, uh, kind of like I think it's rated more like a 10 or 11, like on, on stent meter or something. So, so once I installed that, then I had the issue of, well, I have a Foresight GC2 device as my launch monitor. I can't just pick that thing up and move it back and forth very easily because you got to make sure it's straight, it's aligned. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to really throw off your horizontal, you know, your horizontal launch angle. Um, so what I saw is somebody else on, on YouTube had built kind of a similar device, uh, slide rail. And so I just quickly, you know, went to Lowe's, got, I think it's like 16 inches wide by four foot long um, piece of pine and then added a three and a half foot like linear rail kit that I got off Amazon. And then uh, I was able to take the protective metal case for my GC2 that I got off of uh, Etsy uh, a while back. And it will actually, with screws, mount directly to the piece of wood that's sliding between the rails. So now I've got, a, I've got something that I can quickly and easily just put on the side of the mat because um, it's square to the mat and then slide it back and forth without having to worry about it being lined up anymore. So it, it's really simple and easy just to, just to slide it forward like that. Um, I, I knew I needed to kind of make it easier to carry like in and out of here because we still use this room too as home theater. That's one of the couches over there uh, in that second projector over there because like you probably saw in my screen time lapse, there's a huge white projector screen over on this wall that that projector projects to. So the handles kind of serve dual purpose on this thing. It, it makes it easier for me to grab it and just move it out of the way real, real, real quick, but it also is at a height that basically stops the wood so I don't run completely off the rails. Okay, so outside of, of building that for the, the launch monitor and adding the putting turf, uh, the other thing that I did add in here uh, just to hopefully help make sure that, that the GC2 can pick up the ball um, is I added a, a spotlight. It's pretty common. Uh, most people you see that are, are playing with the GC2 or, or some sort of optical launch monitors will add a spotlight over their hitting area just so that there's better light provided uh, for the launch monitor because most likely I have the lights turned up kind of in this area right now uh, just for the benefit of this video so you can kind of see everything really well. But most likely whenever I go to start actually doing videos in here, actually playing with my golf sim, uh, I'm going to bring these lights down. So this light will be very, very helpful. All right, so what better way to end this video than to take a couple of shots just to kind of show you how the sim is working. Uh, got uh, the 19th hole down at Payne's Valley uh, in Branson, Missouri. Tiger Woods' uh, design uh, loaded up here uh, on GS Pro. So we're going to give it a couple shots and see if I can get close. Ah, that's pretty thin. Thin and deep. I, oh, so close. Get up there.
I think we end on that one. Uh, I'm kind of surprised I got that close. Uh, like I said, I'm not really loose. Um, haven't swung since probably this morning. So, but I think we'll end on that shot, you know, inside of basically a foot and a half, hit the pin. Just want to say I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, now that I've got my setup back here in, indoor, I expect that, you know, I'm going to fire off probably a few uh, comparison videos for the SC4 device that I've, I've been working with. Uh, so those are coming up and then we'll probably do some GS Pro like GCS or uh, GST um, tournament type stuff with uh, the Foresight. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this content and you want to catch those videos coming up, make sure to like the video. But then also if you're not subscribed, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you'll get those notifications as soon as I post those new videos. All right, y'all take care and we'll see you in the next one.